Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now in a shock announcement yesterday, Intel announced it would start to manufacture chips with ARM CPU cores in them and risk 5 CPU cores in them. Now of course the point is it's manufacture, not design. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now the thing about Intel is really it's two companies kind of combined into one. On the one side, there is the CPU design company that we all know, Intel i3, the i5. We have these chips in our desktops, in our laptops. We know its main rivalry comes from AMD. We know that ARM chips are kind of trying to take uh, some of the market share away, let's say like the Apple uh, M1. And that's uh, Intel and its CPU design part. But there's also the manufacturing part, the fabrication part that takes those CPUs that it designs and it also manufactures it. So it designs and manufactures its own CPUs. Now other companies don't do that. So for example, if you take Apple, for example, with its uh, M1, it designs the CPUs, but it doesn't own a fabrication plant. So it will give that job to another company, let's say like TSMC, and they will physically produce the chips and send them back to Apple. Now Intel always does both sides. It designs and manufactures its own chips. The problem is this, is that the manufacturing side sometimes is out of step with the design side. And recently Intel stumbled in terms of the manufacturing side, the fabrication side, because it hasn't been able to keep up with the likes of TSMC and Samsung. And so therefore Intel are still stuck on 14 nanometers, 10 nanometers, uh, and so on. Now, when we talk about these 10 nanometers, 14 nanometer processes, what we're talking about is the number of transistors you can get, the density of those transistors on a chip. Now, the, the greater the density, that means obviously you can get more transistors into the same surface area, you reduce the amount of heat that's produced and you improve the efficiency, which means you can get better performance. So while TSMC and Samsung will be able to push ahead with seven nanometers, five nanometers, Intel have been stuck at a previous generation. And that misstep has hurt Intel's business and given a lot of opportunity, for example, to AMD, who've been able to use the process from companies like uh, TSMC. Now, Intel have made some big announcements about their future. They've got a new CEO and they've kind of really wanted to reinvent themselves and push forward, get over this misstep in the fabrication side of the two halves of this business. Now, to do that, first thing they've said is they've got a seven nanometer process that's on track. It's using the extreme ultraviolet light technology that TSMC and Samsung also use. And that sometime this year, they're going to tape out, that means kind of send to the the fabrication plant, the next generation of Intel processor, which is codenamed Meteor Lake. Now that will see mass production in 2023. Intel has also said that it will use in 2023 other companies to fulfill some of its orders. So it's also looking to partner with either TSMC or Samsung to manufacture chips outside of Intel. And that's a big step away from what Intel has traditionally done. Of course, it has used external foundries in the past, but to declare it in such a way that even core CPU designs will be manufactured outside of Intel is a big step for the company. And the other big announcement was that Intel wants to open up its foundry business and compete with other foundries in the, in the market. Intel foundry services will open up the Intel fabs for the industry. So before it has tried that, it has said, hey, we'll manufacture chips for you, but it didn't really work for a couple of reasons. One is that Intel were very picky about their particular customers. Secondly, they weren't using industry standard tools. They expected their customers to kind of comply with Intel's way of doing things. And that in itself caused some problems. In this new announcement, Intel are saying, no, we're gonna compete in the in, uh, foundry business, in the marketplace, we'll use standard tools. If you want a chip to be made, then you can come to us. And then they've gone one step further. They said, in fact, we are already ready to manufacture chips with ARM processes in them and risk 5 processes in them. And we'll have all of the information, all the tooling that you need, all of the libraries, all of that information, expertise, we'll have it ready on hand so that when you come to us to manufacture your ARM-based processor or your risk 5 based processor, we're ready to do it for you. Now that's really a huge step from Intel because it's tearing down the walls of its previously closed business. Design only Intel, manufacture only Intel. Now it's kind of opening that up and saying, we're open for business for everybody. 
Now, of course, at the moment, it's only offering its existing older process nodes, and it's gonna start doing that service today. And of course, there are lots of chips that are still manufactured on much, much higher numbers, 28 nanometers, uh, and so on, because microcontrollers, uh, things inside automotive in cars, you don't need five nanometers or seven nanometers. It's perfectly well with the, uh, the older nodes and Intel want to open up that business. And in the meantime, they're investing $20 billion in some new fabrication plants in the USA, which will ultimately be seven nanometer plants. And they want to open up that business for everybody to come and start making chips with them. Now, it's always interesting to read the quotes that are given along with the press releases. And there's a quote here from the CEO of Qualcomm where he says, the IDM 2.0 flexible model will provide an important option for the industry. And we look forward to partnering with Intel in the future. Now, of course, uh, Qualcomm are keeping their options open. They're not going to say, no, Intel, we're never going to use you. They say, we look forward to it. If you're offering competitive pricing, if you're offering competitive technology, then we can get our chips manufactured with you. Of course, the point is, is that Qualcomm make ARM-based chips. In fact, Qualcomm just bought Nuvia so that it can build its own custom-based ARM chips, which we're going to see in laptops and ultimately in uh, smartphones over the next few years. And who knows, we could have this day come around where you're using a laptop that's got a Qualcomm chip inside of it, that's got ARM cores inside of it, and they're actually being manufactured by Intel. Likewise, there's also a quote from Sci-5, who are a RISC-V design company, combining Sci-5's industry-leading portfolio of configurable high-performance and embedded RISC-V processor cores with Intel's foundry, advanced process technology will unlock the next wave of leading edge technology for the world. And in fact, sci 5 also released a press release highlighting the fact they are now working with Intel so that Intel have access to all the right information it needs to offer its customers the ability to manufacture chips with RISC-V cores inside of it. So what does this all mean? What this means is that Intel are trying to reinvent themselves, get over this bump in the road, and in doing so, they're saying, hey, we've got new chips coming, we've got a new manufacturing process coming, yes, we're gonna use external processes if we need to, but we're also going to offer our processes to other people. Basically, it's a business decision. It's a business decision so that Intel can try to move beyond these couple of rough years they've had and take a new direction, and they may well succeed. So if the uh, foundry side is really a kind of an independent business unit, just like Samsung makes its Exynos processors, but it also has a foundry business, it also has a TV business and, a, and whatever else business things that Samsung make. So Intel will have a foundry business and a chip design business. Sometimes they'll use each other, sometimes other people will use a foundry business, and that's the plan going forward. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, don't rely on the YouTube recommendation algorithm because it may not even show you this video. Instead, it's better to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.